Hello, how are you doing? And a very warm welcome back to youtube.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep with me, Tom. Now, cast your minds back a little bit to, actually it was last year now, and we reviewed two products from UE2. The first was the X1, which was an x86 64-bit single board PC computer, which was absolutely fantastic. It's so fantastic that it's actually in daily use with me now, and it's the device recording this video that you are currently watching. The second was an ARM RISC-based board called the R1. And yeah, it was okay, but I was asked as part of the UE2 review to show you a couple more functions and features including the ability to reflash its onboard eMMC memory and upload an alternative operating system. Both these devices, by the way, had onboard eMMC and didn't require SD cards to load. Now, at the time, the issue was that UE2 hadn't updated their wiki and didn't actually supply the tools needed to do the upload. I did go around to try and find some alternative tools for the R1, but I just couldn't make it work. So hence things kind of ground to a bit of a halt. Well, the other day I had an email from the sales rep at UE2, who I've been dealing with, to tell me that they have updated the firmware and also the images and their wiki for the R1 product. And did I want to try again? So I said, yeah, OK, we'll take another look. So we're going to have a revisit of the UE2 R1. So for complete transparency, and just to let you know, this is a commercial presentation video. I have been approached by UE2 and I have financially benefited as a result of showing you and talking about these products. With that said, and we just have to excuse the cup of tea because it is getting quite late at the night here. Uh, so this was the uh, UE2X1. That's the board currently that's just off camera over there running the whole show. Absolutely fantastic. Really, really like this product. Highly recommend it. And the second was the UE2 R1, which uses a rock chip arm. I think it's like a hexacore uh, rock chip uh, CPU. So it's, it you know, on paper, it's a very, very powerful board. I think it's on the back, actually, the spec, if I remember. Yeah, so uh, there we are, the RK3588S 8-core 64-bit. Uh, so it's a Cortex, so it's 4X Cortex, we can see there, 4X Cortex A76 and 4X A55. So it's got, the A55 was 32-bit compiled, I think. Uh, so you've also got the R Mali uh, GPU, as well as uh, many, many other functions, including the ability to run SATA. Uh, we have HDMI, USB-C. So, it, you know, it's a very, very good and equipped board, but we did lack software support, which was unfortunately a slightly common thing with a couple of these products. But luckily, slash hopefully, you two have now fixed this. So, so a quick look inside. So you get this sort of printed sleeve, you get this relatively plain box. And inside, you've got the actual board itself, which you've probably seen from the last review. So here is the board, and uh, it's a little bit bigger than Raspberry Pi 4. It's certainly more powerful than Raspberry Pi 4. It's probably more on par with uh, Pi 5, if not a bit faster than Pi 5. So this is actually board itself. The Bluetooth Wi-Fi module is separate and has to be purchased separately and actually clips in to the board here. So I actually clipped mine in last time. And underneath you've actually got uh, compatibility for things like SATA ports and also uh, solid state storage. There is solid state storage on this, but you can actually add additional solid state storage if you wanted. Now, some of these devices do actually come with a uh, power supply. Unfortunately, they don't do a power supply for the three pin UK standard. So mine didn't actually come with the power supply. Mine was an early sample product. They have actually revised this board slightly since. So if you buy one now, uh, you'll get a slightly newer revision than the one I'm going to show you. But the principles of everything I'm going to show you, hopefully, should be the same. Okay, so if I can just draw your attention over to wiki.ue2.com and um, this is the front page of the wiki and you have the multiple products they currently do. So there's the X1 and here is the R1. And it's the R1 I want to click. So as I said, this has been updated. It gives you the spec and more details of the spec than what I've just given you. So we've got introductions, we've got the GPIO layout, and then we've got update configuration to burn eMMC or burn TF cards. That's uh, micro SD cards. You can boot off micro SD if you want. 
So if we now to click burn EMMC, this is what's changed. So we now actually have the RK Rockchip USB driver. Now I did get this from a third party last time, but I had issues with stuff working. Uh, by the way, I am running this on Windows 11. Uh, the Android image is new. Uh, I don't know, well, I prefer to try the Ubuntu or Debian with my preferred image, but we'll, we'll might put Android on and see what it does. Uh, but first I want to look at tools for burning image. So we'll take the driver. So let's just uh, we'll open in a new tab. There's a fair few drivers on here, uh, various versions. So you could grab one of these. I'm going to probably just leave it for the minute. So, so it's saying to install version 5.12. So 5.12 is that one there. And we'll just click to download. Right, so that took its sweet time, but we'll download anyway. So we have the correct driver. There we go, it's now downloading. And then we'll go back to tools for burning image, which is the next one we want to look at. Okay, that's come down. And finally, we'll try the Android image. Now I'm not a huge fan of Android, but we'll, we'll try the Android image uh, because I have been asked to look at that. So we'll see how well that works. So there is the file. Uh, and we'll click to download, download anyway. And that's, we can see, it. well, I don't know if you can see actually if it's picking it up or not, but uh, no, it isn't. So I can tell you that the uh, download is 637 megabytes. So we'll just let that download. Okay, so with all that done, uh, let's take a look in the downloads and a few things we've downloaded. Uh, so first thing will be we need to unzip I've got a feeling we've already installed this but we'll try again so we'll click to run anyway which I don't normally advise but we're doing it so we'll install a driver uh, install okay I assume that's all fine so back to downloads and the toolkit and again we'll need to compress or extract rather okay and again we'll run anyway okay right so this is kind of how it looks stock um, and you might notice it's all in uh, well, what we call simplified Chinese um, which is how it will appear in the uh, tutorial. If we go back to the tutorial you see it's it's here in the uh, tutorial uh, how, how it works etc. So uh, what you can do is if we close that uh, go back to the folder in question, which is not that one, it's that one. Is There is actually a config file, there's two config files, and I believe it's that one. If we open with, we just go into uh, Notepad. Yeah, so you can change the language. So, uh, so if it's here, it says language, kinds selected one. One is see Chinese and language two is English so if you go and change that to two save now if we open back up you'll now notice that we're actually in English so we can kind of see roughly what we're trying to do um, okay so we go back to the tutorials so we want to click so basically it shows you one, two and three. So firmware upgrade. Do I actually need to load the firmware in? And we also do need to find the device. So let's just do that, make sure this is actually working before we go any further. So I've got the board here and as I said, I don't have a power supply, so I've got 12 volt barrel jack supply with 
a UK plug on the end, which will be absolutely fine. So power, powered up from that before. So we'll get that on onto my mains. Uh, you'll then need a USB C cable. So I've got a C to A, and we plug into the USB C there, and we plug that, which is just off camera, into the uh, X1 PC, if you like. So that's in. So you can see here where it says about how to, to flash. So it's basically connect the hold recovery button and the recovery button it shows as one of these buttons, tiny little buttons on here. Let's just go back and you can actually see here that it's actually found one, one found. Okay, that's looking promising. Uh, firmware would now be the boot image. So we need a, a dot IMG or a dot bin. So if we were going to attempt to reflash, let's go back to our image, which is that. Can I open that with anything? <laughs> that hasn't expired, so I can't. Can I extract anything? Go in downloads. Will you extract? Oh, you will. Okay. So if we now go back and let's click on which image we want. Downloads, open. Now, if we now click upgrade. Oh, there we go. So that is now flashing a Android operating system to the EMMC space on the um, R1. Now, as a stress, none of this was working last time. So this is actually quite cool. This is working and it's working from the tools provided by UE2's wiki. OK, so it said download firmware success. It has just restarted, come back up again. To be honest with you, not entirely sure why we're flashing at the moment, but I'm going to just going to disconnect. Take the USB out. There we go. And we'll just power that down for a minute. OK, now then, if I add HDMI, so this thing has full size HDMI, so adding HDMI in is not difficult. Lots of applications for this, including the ability to run as a single board computer that we will try now. So I've got a mouse, always got a spare mouse available. So let's just get that in. So we'll put a mouse on. I have got a keyboard. It might not put that on just a minute. Let's just get a mouse in. There we go. OK, so let's see what happens. We power back up now. What do I see on capture? Oh, there we go. It's still flashing. I don't know what the, what the flashing means, but and I've got to be brutally honest with you. I don't know Android operating system as such, but that has worked absolutely fine. So I need to do like this sort of. Oh, there we go. And it has detected the Bluetooth. Should detect there we are. It's detected the Bluetooth from the onboard card, so that's superb. Uh, got some settings, connected devices, apps. So I've got 16 apps in the system. Calendar, camera, clock. Okay. Not quite sure where it's getting battery from. There isn't a battery on the system, but oh well. There we go. Oh, we can go back. There are apps there. There we are. And we have the file explorer. OK, so that was relatively painless. Um, again, I'm not really an Android user, so I'm not. I was asked to look at this. And I can say, yes, it absolutely works. In all, yeah, really pleased that we at least now got this firmware flashing working uh, properly with the UE2 R1. So don't forget all the information and links are in the description to this video. Thanks once again for your company and I'll see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, bye for now.